excited. I'm Emily. I'm Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Oh, nice to meet you. Right from the start, they made instant connections. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Soleil. It felt more like a reunion than a first encounter. This is my sister, Karen. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jackie. Nice to meet you. Oh, way. So nice. We're in the same boat. We are. I love oh, that. We've been in the boat. <laughs> it's nice to be in the boat with yeah. someone. Exactly. Throughout the day, they shared stories of cancer, miracles, and hope. I, from the day that we got diagnosed, it has astounded me how many miracles the universe has sent us. Mm -hmm. I mean, daily. Well, I think our miracle for today would be meeting Emily, because I've never been so inspired. <laughs> Since the day after Christmas, the day Soleil was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, mom and daughter have called the Ronald McDonald House home and will for the entire year-long course of Soleil's treatment. I adopted Soleil when she was two months old, and my job in this world is to protect her. So to hear that my child had cancer was probably the most devastating thing any mother could hear. In just 24 hours, Soleil will undergo a limb spare surgical technique that was pioneered in dogs and adopted for kids. And this tumor, which we've named Tina Tumor, will be removed from her body and they will be able to use a, a metal insert in place of her femur and in part of, does that make you scared? Does it scare you? Yeah, it's okay. Emily knows all too well what Soleil's going through. She was just 11 years old when she was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. Emily had a different tumor location, but received similar treatments. She was given three months to live. That was 20 years ago. Just spent a lot of time with family and friends, just saying goodbye and, you know, watching the sunrises and sunsets and saying, this is my day, it's my day. And I was okay with that. Um, and three months came and went. An experimental drug, first used to benefit dogs, saved Emily's life. Because the dog tumors and the human tumors are almost identical, what we have is the opportunity to ask slightly different questions in dogs and humans. But learning the answers from both groups of patients actually makes treating the other group of patients better. We should be working towards a greater goal that cancer is cancer, no matter who it's in or what it's in. They can see where the tumor in my lung was. There's scar tissue now, but there was no evidence of cancer. <gasps> That's a and That was a miracle. It was, it was. yeah. And that, that was 20 years ago. It'll be 20 years in October. Oh my God. Surprising news to Jackie and Soleil, but that was far from the most startling revelation of the day. Connected by a disease, the two families learn they shared the same pediatric yeah, my, oncology my, team. My doctor was Dr. Greffy, but Dr. Oh, Dr. Leah Gore. Greffy. Yeah. He's our doctor. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. He's so good. He's so awesome. And then Leah Gore. Unfortunately, they also learn that not much has changed in the 20 years since Dr. Greffy and Dr. Gore treated Emily. The chance of reoccurrence is very real and can't be predicted. So right now patients with localized osteogenic sarcoma have a, about a 70% chance of overall cure. It's stalled in, in osteogenic sarcoma for many years and so we really need to be racing for this cure for these 30% of patients that, whose disease comes back and may ultimately kill them. Emily had this 20 years ago. My daughter got diagnosed on December 26th. The fact that her doctor had to tell her the same, tell us the same prognosis, to me is devastating and frustrating and really unacceptable. We have very limited drugs or regimens to give to these children who relapse. So if we can have canine trials with promising new agents that can rapidly then be translated into human trials, I think it would be wonderful. Twenty years ago, dogs came to the rescue of Emily. Clinically, she's done pretty well through her CHOP chemotherapy. Today, dogs with naturally occurring cancers who enter clinical trials move us closer to a curate that we can live with. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Sue and Joe Schmidt's pride and joy, Riley, lived a good and purposeful life. Our lives were touched by the osteosarcoma, but it's, it's a much bigger story than that. 
Riley was diagnosed with osteosarcoma on the day after Christmas, one year to the day before Soleil's diagnosis. Right. Go on. Every three weeks, Riley and his devoted owners made the 12 hour trip from a small town in southwest Colorado to the Flint Animal Cancer Center in Fort Collins to participate in a clinical trial. To be part of a clinical trial and to benefit other dogs was even more special to us. When we found out it was translational research, that was amazing. Hi, Riley. Hey, bud. Hi. The ongoing trial feeds into a pool of knowledge that extends well beyond the last year of Riley's life. You'd like to be able to see into the future and, and know what role this played, what answer it gave, but I guess it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it's a contribution. We'll never have those answers without everybody playing a role, whether it's the researchers, the veterinarians, the human physicians, the patients, um, whether they have four legs or two. The concept is called comparative oncology. What benefits dogs benefits people. It's just such an opportunity to get all these great minds together. But still treat the critical lymph nodes that we need to treat in the neck. Great minds, like David Rabin, a leading radiation oncologist at the University of Colorado Comprehensive Cancer Center. He also had a dog named Riley, who he lost to cancer. This was Riley when he was a puppy. We went through a heartbreaking, gut-wrenching experience with our dog, losing our dog last September. His experience with Riley at the Flint Animal Cancer Center opened the door to a closer working relationship with the center. The loving kindness that was shown to our dog. Uh, every human being should have that kind of loving kindness and care and attention. And it shows me the incredible work and passion and dedication the surgeons up there do, the radiation oncologists up there do. The medical oncology, it really has kind of retuned my thinking about everything. So something that might take five to eight to 10 years in a human being trial is going to be hopefully done in one to three years. That's really what's transformational here to me and what's exciting and innovative and, and really gives me passion to continue to work with some very, very bright people up the road in Fort Collins. Collaboration, science and advances in comparative oncology We'll change conversations like yep. these in the future. So, I mean, it was kind of a shock. I mean, I don't think at 11 you ever think cancer. I mean, my first... The conversation will turn from cancer, miracles and hope, to talk of cures and, well, ice cream and cartwheels. So this is from a leukemia patient of mine, and this is what I hope to get from Soleil 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Thank you so much for working so hard to cure my cancer and giving me the best care anyone could ask for. Thanks to you, I have graduated high school and college, become a teacher, got married, had a baby girl, and I'm still living a wonderful life. I don't know what Soleil's gonna do in this world, but I can guarantee you that having gone through this experience, she's gonna change the world somehow. Oh, 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 oh,